Hey internet, I'm Simon Squibb, your host at the Good Luck Club. I believe luck is an ingredient that's necessary for a successful life. Whatever you're starting, building or shipping, I'm here to tell you, without luck, you're not going to make it. I've been testing my luck as an entrepreneur since I was 15 years old. I have had plenty of failures and successes, and I'm fascinated by the things I couldn't control. In each episode, I'll invite a guest to share their stories about luck, the good and bad, and together we'll test my theory about luck's role. Our next guest is Ben Paul. Ben is the founder of The Next Big Thing, the health kitchen cookies. Camden born and bred, he grew up watching traders of Camden hustle and laugh. He had a deep interest in drawing and playing sports. Playing sports gave him the street cred you need in Camden and the drawing fed his creative side. Like many of us, at 17 he wondered what the real future for him might be and decided to knuckle down and become a personal trainer to the stars. For over 20 years he has ticked that box, training the likes of Stephen Merchant and other people I'm not allowed to mention that are famous. Then 18 months ago decided it was time to go big on his new adventure THK. He will tell us more about this journey in our podcast today. So welcome Ben. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. No problem. Listen, uh, I always like to ask my guests to kick things off, to define what success means to them. I'm really interested to hear your definition of what success is. I mean, that's a, sh- that's a huge question, isn't it? I mean, my definition of it has evolved, I think, as a, since, since day one. I would have, my first definition of success when I was younger would have been money, 100%. Earn as much money as possible. Um, as I've got older and moved through life, that's definitely changed. Now, uh, my daughter's two. Success to me, the number one thing is how my daughter grows as a human. In business, I mean, I mean I'm sort of living parallel lives almost with my business. I've been a personal trainer for 20 years. I've run my own business for about 18. So I, from sort of entrepreneur, in the entrepreneur world, I was super young and kind of fell into it really. Um, and I was working for a gym and uh, you, you eventually work up to become a freelance personal trainer and you run your own business. But the gym I was in wanted to stop that deal. So anyone who wanted to do it had to do it then. So I sort of made the jump way sooner than I thought I was going to. And uh, probably the best thing that ever happened at the time. And I started earning a lot of money pretty quickly. And being a cash business, I was, you know, under 20 years old earning a fair bit of money. Um, So at the time, I considered myself successful. Mm. Looking back, I wasn't at all. Mm. Um, Then... So you, so you, that's a, just, to, just to stop there for a second and ask, so you, you framed success at that point in your life as the money you were making? 100%. Right. And, and your daughter being born, do you think that was the moment you redefined it or did it come before that? I started, I, I started off being a personal trainer because I wanted to help people. I wanted to help people get fit and healthy. But it was motivated by money. Mm. So to be as the busiest I could be, mm. to earn as, as much money as I could. Mm. Um, I left college wanting to help people and that quickly evolved into wanting to earn as much money as possible. Do do you think the societal pressure was part of that? I mean, why were you in university? I don't think you were that thinking that way, right? You were were learning and then you jumped into work. What what changed? Being around successful personal trainers, Mm. being around successful people. All my clients were successful people. Mm. Um, And very quickly I became, um, the money was my driving force which looking back probably wasn't the best scenario to grow in. Mm. Um, My ego at the time got ahead of me and I ended up getting fired where I was, you know, I was 20 years old, had more money in my pocket than I could dream of and I was working in the gym. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't serve myself well with my behavior a lot of the time. and I got fired and it gave me a big crash back down to earth. Mm-hmm. It just so happens when we talk about luck, a friend of mine was working in another gym and the day after I got fired, called me up and said, I've got a job opening here. What's your situation? I said, well, just so happens as of yesterday, I'm looking for somewhere. So 
I ended up at um, another local gym and then I kind of started my career chapter two. So I started again, wasn't driven by money and was driven by wanting to help people again. How old were you at this point? 23. Hmm. I'm wondering if there's a correlation between our ages and our ambitions. Sometimes I look back at my own career. I mean, when I'm younger, of course, you see people that are successful and rich. I think we all initially get driven by money. But as we mature, I mean, 23. You know, it's, it's I, w- I was in no way rich. Hmm. Um, I come from a sort of a, a working class background. I had more money in my pocket than I I never had mm. quite quickly mm. as well. So is this a good thing, do you think, or a bad thing at the time? Uh, look, at the time it was amazing, but looking back, probably not a good thing. Mm. Came I'll, too quickly to you, you mean? Yeah, just like, and and I was running my own business, and you know that comes with a lot of responsibility mm. officially. You know, paying your way, mm. things like that. Um, it definitely it's a very saturated market now. Everyone wants to be a personal trainer. At the time, it wasn't, and it was you know. I hit the ground running, Mm. I started earning good money and probably happened a little bit too soon Mm. in my personal training career. I came crashing back down to earth, had to start again from square one. Was this this because the place that you were working went bankrupt or what was... No, so I was misbehaving, you know, the, the, um, the gym was charging a certain amount of money and they were giving me my fee out of it. Mm. And then I was undercutting the gym and saying to people, if you pay me cash, you'll do it for this price. Mm. So they got it a bit cheaper. I earned much more, and my diary was full. All of a sudden, I was wow. flying. God, this is what, one of the reasons I w- wanted to interview you too. I mean, you, you, you're so honest about the process that you've gone through. I really mm. love that. Because I think we all go through, let's call it a moral code evolution, mm. right? What's what's right and wrong and how to survive, especially if you've come from nothing. I've come from nothing, so I can relate. You know, yeah. you kind of have to survive and then you just want to get ahead. So you, interesting where you're saying there with the gym and the undercutting piece, you know, is it's survival, survival kicks in at a kind of ultimate level, right? Yeah, I just, you know, I was having a bit of money in my pocket, but then my brain started ticking. I was thinking, I can earn more than this. Why is so-and-so sitting in an office earning mm. more money than I am and mm. I'm doing the donkey work? Mm. So being young and naive and probably too arrogant, mm. I flipped that on its head. Mm. And then I actually called up about five years ago, the, the pe- person who was the boss there, a fellow called Chris. I actually contacted him and apologized about five years ago. He, he, was, he was doing a fitness project and I contacted him. I saw it in the, in the media. And he was doing quite well. I contacted him saying congratulations and then just sort of apologised for my behaviour. That's very big of you. you I think mean? a lot of people could learn from that uh, yeah. lesson there. I think a lot of people out there probably have made some mistakes and there's no harm in going back and saying sorry to the people that you maybe made a mistake mm. to. I had that experience. I, I, I um, invested in a restaurant in Hong Kong and the chef um, basically did some bad things in the business and then a few years after uh, he left the business he came back to me and said sorry because he wasn't actually actually an alcoholic and apologized for being an alcoholic and of course you know once I understood what was actually that's an addiction that's a problem he had of course I forgave him and I think it was very therapeutic for him I think through uh, the life we all make mistakes right maybe going back to the people who've made mistakes and, and saying sorry it must be therapeutic for mm. you too and I'm sure the person you said it to appreciated that I think the older you get, the more sort of you live your life by certain morals. Mm. And, you know, if you look back and regret something, I think there's no harm in apologising if, yeah. if it made someone else's life a bit more difficult. But not a lot of people evolve like that. I call that self-awareness. Yeah. You became self-aware somewhere along the line, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and today, what is success to you? I mean, now bringing us to, to where you are today as a founder of an up-and-coming brand and building a business, what is success to you? My, I mean, a wise man once told me that you should always focus on why you're doing something, right? So my mission... You were saying that wise man was me, but I stole yeah. it from Simon to Nick, so uh, right. all credit to him. But yeah. So, yeah, there's a chain. There's always a chain. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah Someone you pass it on to someone me. else. I don't know who Simon to Nick stole it from, but yeah. it was genius. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's true. And, you know, I started making protein cookies for my clients and I was doing it for free. Mm. I wasn't um, I wasn't charging them. And it started off with one man, which I won't name him, but I was going into his house and I was cooking for him. And we we're on this sort of journey of uh, his loss, uh, um, weight loss journey. And I was cooking all his food for him, right, which is a very surreal situation to be in. Mm. 
I'm not a chef or, yeah. you know. But I ended up in this situation. So the what I noticed was in his house, I was going in there every night, he was tucking into hobnobs. That was the... Uh, um, that was the biscuit of choice. We're not sponsored by Hobnobs, no. just to be clear. Other, other are brands opposite. are available. We're the opposite to Hobnobs. We yeah. are the competitor. Yeah. The founder of a competitor. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Hobnobs. Yeah, good old so. Hobnobs. And I thought, I've got a. B- you can't tell people not to do something. You have to give them an alternative. That's the way the brain works. You can't say, don't do this. The first thing you want to do is go and do it. So I had to offer him an alternative. So I wanted to make him something of the equivalent or. You know, something that ticked that box for him because it wasn't just a taste of them. It would have been a habit. It would have been a time of day. It would have, there have been many factors of why he was tucking into hobnobs. So I made him what I thought was a healthy equivalent and he liked them. Mm. So I offered them to my other clients. They liked them. I offered them to other people's clients. They liked them. I used to have a cupcake box in the corner of the gym and People used to come up and say, I've just taken this and give me the money. And that's how I operated for a couple of years. And now I like them. And now you like I'm them. I actually more than like them. I'm a bit addicted to them. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Well, that's, that's the aim. That's the aim. Mm. That's on. But so to success today for you, what, what would it be going as forward As many now? people to eat them as possible. Right. So you're listening, Universe. We, yeah. we want every single listener to go out and buy... THK, the health kitchen cookies you can buy them online, online. or in stores and and yeah so just telling mm. the universe please buy them yeah but that that's now your ambition is it to more and more people eat, eat healthier and more yeah. and more people you know consume and enjoy yeah your, people your consume food more on the go now mm. than ever and that's a a, a a battle that's harder and harder yeah so i want to slip in there and offer people a um a choice of something that is natural foods low calorie no added sugar, protein, fats, mm. everything you need for a busy person on the go. Mm. And would you say, is it like, I don't know, global distribution and five million people a month eating your product? Would, you know, what's, what's the benchmark? Have you set yourself a target? I think as entrepreneurs, we sometimes forget to set targets. It's almost, yeah. they're almost a pain, but what do you think about it? Yeah, it's funny you say that. I had this conversation with someone the other day and I, I, was, setting, I was setting myself micro targets and the big goal. And that big goal, I struggled to pick that. Hmm. Could be anything. Hmm. So I sat down, I got a whiteboard. I'm, I'm offering the, um, the product on a subscription basis. This is where I want to build the business so I can keep the integrity of the product without having to pay too many middlemen, hmm. you know. Um, and I want 100,000 subscriptions. That's my, hmm. that's my aim. Oh, I think, I think so. you're going to get there. I mean, I'm totally addicted. Uh, switching gears for a second, I, I'm interested in what you think about luck. What's your view on the word luck? How do you perceive luck? I think luck is a thing, but you earn it. Unless you sit on the sofa and play the lottery and win it, but you still there's some form of earning that. You had to go and buy the ticket, or now you can jump online. I do it on my phone. A couple of clicks of a button, I bought a ticket. But you have to go through a process to earn the luck. But... You know, in in business, it's it's in the PT game. It's huge. Any any um, any young PT that comes to speak to me, and I get it all the time. I say to them, you have you're going to get lucky with your clients, but you have to earn it. You have to be in the environment. You have to be working mm. all the time, mm. working for free mm. until you meet someone. I've had ex- I've, I've walked that walk. Mm. I know exactly what it takes. And you're in the gym a lot and earning nothing to be a PT. And transferring that experience you've had into your business today, you know, what, what, what would be luck? I mean, you are working hard on that business. And yeah. I have seen you, for example, going at social media heavy yeah. and pushing the business. And it's certainly not from a lack of effort. It hasn't popped yet. A lot of fans out there, but it's not the numbers that we were just talking about, not where yeah. you want it to be yet. So what's missing? I feel like I need expertise in certain areas. Like the social, I go out to get social media game hard, but I'm not a social media man, so I need an ex- an expert in social media. So is is it is it that then therefore you um, you need more funding? Is that part of it to then hire those people, or is it you haven't met the right person who could help you do it? What's the path to making that piece of luck needed happen? Both. I haven't found the person because I haven't actively searched because I haven't got the money 
to pay them. Mm. There's a dilemma for a lot of entrepreneurs, what you're talking about. It's kind of next level, how do you grow it, right? So what comes first? Ironically, if you had the right social media person supporting you, then you'd have even more people knowing your product and therefore once trying it, wanting it like I do all the time. But that's like chicken egg thing, isn't it? Chicken and egg, it's exactly it. You know, I've laid in bed many nights going over the chicken and egg theory. And what do you think came first out of interest? What, the actual chicken or the egg? Yeah. (laughs) Who laid the egg? (laughs) But where did that come from? I don't know. Mm. Has to have been the egg first, by the way. There is no chicken without an egg, right? Yeah, but who laid the egg? Created in the ground by little green men. It popped. Popped out the just my theory popped out the earth yeah popped out yeah. the earth but yeah. i mean so it's quite interesting though isn't it with, with your situation i think the um do, do you do you think you need a big break is there a big break coming or missing did you have that big break in personal training in that career do you think it's it, what, what, what is it what, what's gonna in personal training i had a i had a lucky break which kick-started the second chapter of my personal training career. I was in the, um, in the gym that I went to, and nine months, couldn't get a client. And I went from having a full diary to couldn't get a client for nine months. In my early 20s, arrogantly walked in thinking, now oh, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Didn't happen. Nine months. And then I walked into the bar, the restaurant, on the day I was thinking of leaving and going somewhere else and a man was sitting in the in the chair talking to a sales girl in the gym saying my trainers left what do I do who do I train with my trainers left and I just slipped my hand in introduced myself and he's now I, I, he's my most important client and a very good friend of mine as well I train his wife his kids I've seen his kids grow up he's he's hundred percent the catalyst of me becoming a f- pretty successful person trainer in the place I was do you, do you think do you think the people around you uh, you know this whole concept of like who's around you makes all the difference so this person coming into your life you could argue um, that that was a moment of luck you were about to leave and then suddenly this person comes into your life who makes it better um, was it the person you ended up making the cookies for out of interest no no separate person okay. separate person he's um He's a, he's a, not only a client, he's a very good friend and a bit of a confidant of mine, a bit of a life mentor. If I've got an issue or something, he's definitely some. I see him, we, we train together every day. And he's definitely someone who, if I'm struggling in any part of my life, is, I, I'll, you know, I'll have a chat with him mm. about it. So he's a very important person for me, not just professionally, but personally. And that just was an off the chance meeting. Do you think now this transition you're in where you've got, you have got, and I'm being objective, I mean, I, you have got a really interesting business with the health kitchen. It's got so much potential, mm-hmm. um, but you are still distracted, I would, I would, I would argue, with your, with your old uh, business that's yeah. called personal training business. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people probably struggle in the transition, so I just think for our listeners it might be interesting for a second just to talk about that, that, mm-hmm. that struggle between your old life and the new life that you want. Yeah. What, what, what's your feeling around that? Is it, it can you not go cold turkey on the old business and, and focus completely on your new business, or what are it's, you waiting for? It's an option. It's an option. Um, it's something that's, you know, has kept me up at night for a while now. I've had a chat with you about it. Mm. I came to you and asked your opinion pretty quickly about it. I know what you think. It's a really tough one for me. Um, not only because I'm a successful personal trainer, is I've I've got really tight relationships with my clients. And it's difficult. It's both good luck and bad luck there, isn't it? Yeah, in a it's way. A difficult you're lucky transition. to have those relationships, but it's in a way also can hold you back mm. a little bit, right? Because mm. you feel obliged to mm. take care of them. Mm. Yeah, and you want to because you like them. You know, it's 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 a tough one. But I think a lot of people struggle with this. I see a lot of people that want to start their own business and they're working for a company and they feel obliged to help the company they're yeah. we're working at. I mean, Connor, who's uh, my cameraman now, he, he's he's got a, another job, not just my cameraman. You know, and I think we all struggle sometimes with liking our jobs, mm. but still, that's not necessarily what we want to do for the rest of our lives, perhaps, and and being able to move on, right? I mean, do you? My, my thing is, is not not. I mean, I would be a personal trainer for the rest of my life, mm. but. 
you can't be you can't be a personal trainer it's a, it's i say it's a young man's job it's you know there's not too many old personal trainers so once you hit past a, a certain age you become less and less just naturally inspiring to people in many ways you always mm. inspire some people forever mm. but you know it's a it's a difficult job to maintain for life it's an interesting one because I, I also interviewed another personal trainer uh, in episode two um, and um, I think it, it's very interesting to hear people that are let's say I, I know people that are plumbers they're trained plumbers yeah. but they want to do something else but it's very hard to give up what they've learned as well you're, yeah. you're almost not throwing away all that learning all that knowledge but you in a way you are right you're emotionally way, attached to you're it emotion and you've, yeah. you you've you've lived off that skill set of motivating people for a long time but it's quite hard to transition from motivating people in that environment under a personal training environment to then go motivating your staff and your company yeah right so that which you could transfer that skill over quite mm. quite easily right mm. but it's quite hard to give up what you the legacy stuff mm. yeah de uh, definitely and you become very important in very important people's lives so for quite a unique situation a personal yeah, trainer you know you have someone that's that's super powerful and important in their own life mm. and will be running to meet you and apologizing that they're late mm. and it's almost like an authority mm. sort of role you're playing right. in some really powerful people's lives right. so okay, it's quite a surreal existence mm. a lot of the time being a personal trainer um Giving that up is quite a big thing. Of course. Um, that's an, it's an interesting network. You know, I, I mean, it's fascinating. I was think about people I used to work with and they become friends. And then over time, you, you have a you know, friendship. They're not just working for me anymore. And, and, and I think that kind of happens definitely in personal training. I, you know, I have a personal trainer as well, as you know. So I find I, I, the relationship I have with my personal trainer is, is quite deep. You know, you spend a lot of time together. You share stuff especially about your health and once you start yeah. sharing stuff about your health then everything else opens up in those sessions right yeah so it becomes friendship so it's so, interesting what about like you still train these people as, as a friend training situation yeah. but equally I, I personally think as you know and you mentioned earlier in my opinion it's very hard to do two things at once so yeah. you know the, the building a cookie empire a healthy kitchen business globally is no easy task full time mm. with nothing else to think about no matter you know you have a, a child and you have another business that you're maintaining it, i i think the odds of it working just go down yeah um, and yeah, I, I agree I, yeah. I don't know you know it's, it's, it's just i think it's a problem a lot of people a lot of our listeners will have so i'm interested to explore it and i and maybe we can go on youtube after this because the podcast is you know we're coming to an end of our podcast now. so maybe we can go on, on youtube and talk about this a bit later because i think maybe we can get some questions from the public um and, and have a discussion about this because i think it is a problem for people yeah. and i can feel it for you and uh, as well it's not an easy thing yeah, yeah. to decide to like you say the relationships you've got and so difficult on. transition totally um just closing off i always ask this kind of final question um when, when finishing the podcast and it's like if you went back to your younger self and gave some advice i think 17 years old when you had that moment and as i mentioned in the intro um what would it be what would you give what advice would you give to that 17 year old be more fearless be more fearless yeah yeah be mum be more fearless and and you know just go for it whatever you uh whatever you want to do just go go for it do you think your 17 year old self you were you were not fearless I kind of imagine you being quite fearless at that age no i i was i was fearless in do you know what i wasn't fearless in life experiences i never went traveling wasn't brave enough never um you know never um that do you know what that's probably the main one it seems interesting traveling thing. I'm, i've always been quite a home bod I've, I've always, when I was a kid, I used to get homesick quite easily. And I still get remnants of that as an adult. But um, I like my familiar surroundings, but I would have travelled more. What about now? How do you feel about travelling now? Just out of interest. Fine. Do Fine. you do a lot of travelling? Yeah. You've but got not a place in Spain, haven't you? I think you yeah, said yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got, you know, I've got a two-year-old daughter. So as soon as she came along, I thought I want to get a little base somewhere where she can grow up going to abroad. And, you know, we can go as a family and, and spend some quality time together. So um, now I can't travel around as freely. I've got bigger responsibilities. But 
That's when a I was, whole different kettle of fish. So yeah, you have kids as well. That yeah. changes the dynamic once again, doesn't it? Yeah, and I've got I've got you know two businesses effectively. Mm. I can't just up and leave. Totally. And yeah. And when I was younger and I had more freedom. Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll, uh, we'll no, jump over to YouTube me. and do a live now. Yeah, um, absolutely. And people can ask some questions there. And uh, I want to thank you very much for your time today. I'm just going to sum up what, what I took from today's uh, insights from, from you, Ben. I think evolving as a person, particularly around your moral code, can be so rewarding. I think not being stuck in your ways or getting stuck in a certain way of thinking um, is is something to really think about, and I think your story there is uh, is so useful. I mean, going back and saying sorry to people, and 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 realizing what you want and don't want out of life, um, mm. and by 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 realizing what you did or did not do right in the past. Mm. Um, I know you want to be a shining example for your daughter, so that's that's the drive. Yeah, that's the main mind. that's the main Which objective think, now. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, being fierce, I love that. I think go back to your younger self and just you know be a bit braver, do the things that perhaps you were scared to do. In your case traveling but i think that's a, a really great insight and then um yeah basically i i think you're uh, you're going to be very successful and i'm excited to f follow your 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 future thank you very, very much carefully. i'm yeah. sure our listeners will too so thanks for your time thank you thanks for having me